Hello and welcome to another GIS based video. This video isn't going to be specifically on ArcGIS or Global Mapper or any specific GIS, FOSGIS or otherwise. This is going to be a NCGMP09 slash GEMS data model focused video. Specifically with regard to the description of map units data table and how it functions in a geodatabase and best practices for populating this table. And maybe best practices isn't the right terminology to use because um, I'm going to do some weird things in this in, with regard to um, editing and demonstration. And the reason why I'm doing this is sometimes it's a little easier to show things in a data table with information already in it. What I have here in the Pouye geodatabase is the description of map units. It is currently empty. And the reason why is I haven't populated this yet, but I wanted to show in that NCGMP09 GEMS data model where this exists. So inside the geodatabase, it is a data table all into itself. So one of the things that we can do with data tables is if we have one that's already built in Excel, we can import it into that data table. We can export it from the data table into Excel format. Sometimes it's easier to share with people if you have co-authors that don't have ArcGIS or FOSGIS or anything like that. You can share this information with them in an Excel spreadsheet and it's kind of nice to be able to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap over to my Excel spreadsheet that represents the description of map units for a upcoming quad, Tierra Amarilla. I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the things that happen and some of the changes that have come to GEMS from the NCGMP09 data model. If you look at the documentation on GEMS, there's little that has changed in the grand scheme of things. There's a few things that have moved around and been renamed with good purpose, in my opinion. But I wanted to go ahead and give a demonstration on how this gets filled out or things to think about or um, what each of the fields mean. So currently, we'll see that we have this sorted, not alphabetic, and it's certainly not chronologic. I have it sorting off of the description of map units ID field. And I will let you know that most of the time I populate this using a Python script. So there's really no need for uh, an author to do this. Uh, the GIS tech can do this very easily and get this taken care of. And it's not the focus of a geologist. The geologist doesn't care about what that you know description of map units ID number is. That number is arbitrary. It's for database purposes. So currently it's sorted off of that. This object ID field is an ArcGIS based thing. So when you make uh, objects, when you make features, entries into a a feature class or a data table, it gives it an object ID number. This is ARC's method of handling the database nature of the data entries. So that is how some of that gets populated and you'll see times where that uh, description of map units, if you use a Python script, will mirror the object ID in a lot of ways. Um, so just keep in mind that the object ID field is not required for NCGMP09 or GEMS. It is just a byproduct of having exported this from ArcGIS to Excel. One of the things that we can look at right here, let's start going through the NCGMP09 GEMS specific fields. So we have our map unit and our map unit really is the short plain text key identifier for the specific geologic map unit. The reason why I say the term plain text is let's look at a specific case here with that San Andreas formation. So in map unit, it is IPSA because it is font independent. This does not require any special fonts or anything like that. It is a way of knowing that this is a Pennsylvanian geologic unit and the name is the San Andreas. This way, it doesn't rely on a font to display correctly. And the reason why this comes into play is in our label field. Label is the true text string used on the map to display the label for the unit 
and it is font dependent. And in an NCGMP09 GEMS data model, it uses the FGDC GeoAge font. And that's why our San Andreas formation has a star SA. And the reason why we have these two fields and don't just use one or the other is because of an issue with fonts. Fonts sometimes code these back and forth. So there was a time where this same unit would have been labeled caret SA. And that was dependent on which font was being used. And I can't remember if that was Stravetica or Helve Geo or Helvetica, one of those. They were flipped. Another example of how these fields work together is when we look at the unit, the Triassic, let's do Chinli, in FGDC GeoAge is this. So using this field is really dependent, using the label field, is really dependent on which font you use. So that's the reason why we need a very explicit string-based plain text key for using the map unit. We don't want to confuse these in any situation. We want to make sure we have a very clear, understandable way to do this. The FGDC um, uh, Digital Cartographic Standard for Geologic Maps booklet does have all of the codes, the special characters for coding the symbology so that it is the correct Pennsylvanian symbol and the correct Triassic symbol. So go ahead and feel free to look at that documentation. It's available online. You can download it. You can print it out. There's tons of ways to get a hold of this. Just um, uh, search for, in a, an internet browser, FGDC, Digital Cartographic Standard for Geologic Maps. And that will get you that document. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the details of all the rest of the different symbology for label, but that's the reason why there's a map unit field and a label field. The label is for the map font specific. The map unit is a plain text so that it is independent of font because as times change we end up using different fonts. Ten years ago the Bureau of Geology in New Mexico was using Stravetica. So that confusion is what is solved by this map unit field. Next, we come to the name field, which is basically the traditional name of the group, formation, member, or unit as, uh, as appropriate. So like we talked earlier with the Triassic uh, Chinli formation, you know, that would be Chinli, or like we have here, San Andres, or um, in the case of alluvium or anthropogenic fill, artificial fill, disturbed earth, anything like that. The full name is a more verbose version of the name field, whereas here we have, you know, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvanian San Andres formation, the Upper Cretaceous Dakota group, uh, Greenhorn member of the Manco Shale. This is the more uh, explicit definition of the name of the unit. And these two are pretty self-explanatory as is the age field. There's not much to it. We just go ahead and put in our best um, understanding of the age. If we have actual age dates, um, that will constrain this even further that we can use. But this is the generic age, and you can go ahead and use ranges in there. It does say in the FGDC or NCGMP09 uh, text that this field can be null, um, but it's easy enough to do, especially when we're working with the uh, headings and stuff like that, we might as well just go ahead and put them in there and give them an age because usually we tend to do our description of map units based off of an age hierarchy. Then comes the short description and this is the short explanation of our unit and it's similar to the description where it's a free format text description of the map unit. So this is the uh, explanation of bedding, thickness, uh, color, weathering patterns, overarching lithology, etc., etc. The short description is used in cases where we have many units on a map, 
The short description is the very minor, uh, the most uh, basic information that we need to describe the unit. So color, uh, unit thickness, lithology, outcrop characteristics, distinguishing features, that type of information. Whereas the full description, so long as we can get it to fit on a map, we will use this. And this has all of the explanation of a unit. It's the very complete description of the unit, including everything that we possibly can, including distinguishing features, uh, genesis, age constraints, uh, fossil uh, identification. And here's where we get to where the weirdness starts. And we need to talk about this in terms of NCG MP09 and gems. I want to include this really so that there's a general understanding of both possibilities. So, okay, so I just made a note here, and that note says that this is NCG MP09. For the gems version of this, see the field's geo material. We'll come to that at the end because the structure of the description of map units changed a little bit. The order that the features that the fields show up is a little different. So our general lithology is the numeric key for our lithologic description. So this would be just a generic sedimentary unit. I don't remember what all of these mean, but if I'm not mistaken, this is an Arco sandstone or the best description for a sandstone. Um, best description for an arcosic sandstone, let's put it that way. So that is what the general lithology, and then we look these numbers up in the general lithology table. So that is a separate table that's an established table. You don't need to enter anything into it. It is a uh, list, effectively, a user list of the general lithology hierarchies. Then we need to go ahead and associate a confidence with our general lithology. So this, we are confident that this unit is this lithology and it's high confidence or low confidence that this sedimentary unit is what it, we're, we're claiming it is. So we want to make sure we use that terminology to low, medium, and high confidence. This changes a little bit in gems and we'll see that in just a little bit. These two are NCGMP09 specific and in gems it's a little different. It's called the um, geo material and geo material confidence. We'll get to that in just a second. Then we have our hierarchy key, and this usually causes a little confusion because it gets mixed up with our general lithology. And the reason why it has changed in gems is because these two got confused for one another. The hierarchy key also got confused because this is technically called the H key in the general lithology table, which people were confusing which one goes where. This field, the hierarchy key, is truly the hierarchical sorting of our units. So currently let's look at how this is sorting. It's sorting unit, 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 heading, 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 heading. If we sort off the hierarchy key, we'll see that these orders, the order shifts and it aligns, it, it sorts based off of the first field, then the second field, then the third field, etc., etc. So it's best if we pad this with zeros as well so that we can include as many as we need to. And we can see that five gets us to this level. And this is generally where I suggest we go ahead and include two five pairs of numbers. That typically has been adequate. There may be a scenario where we have to go ahead and add in an extra set, but it seems like for the most part with headings and subheadings and stuff like that, very easily we can go ahead and describe everything with we need with the five pairs. Notice that these are separated with a hyphen, and when we sorted it, zero, zero, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the very first one, and that's a heading. So this first set is now denoting a heading. Under that heading, we have a unit, and there are no subunits that follow it. 
we end up with another heading with a secondary heading with a third order heading and then our unit underneath that. So that's how the hierarchy key works. It's a sorting field and it really is convenient to have because in conjunction with this and a few other fields we can populate the symbol field to include everything we need on the description of map units on the map in the map and it'll sort for us so that we don't have to move things around manually which is extremely time consuming. Using this field alone we can have everything sort exactly how we want and include all of the information like map unit, label, paragraph style, description, name, full name, age, anything we want we can include it in there. So that is where the power of the hierarchy key comes in and I strongly recommend making sure you fill this out as well as the paragraph style with all of your headings, subheadings, etc. It is very convenient to have this all set up and you'll get an idea before you even build your description of map units of what your order is, what your sorting is. And you can do this in any way you want and it's really nice and convenient. And if we need to add anything, so let's say we needed to add a unit in here, we could very easily just go ahead and let's say it needed to go between 5 and 6. We could just change these ones to increase that last column by 1. So add 1 to each of that one and then insert our new field to be the 06. So 02, 01, 01, 01, 06. And then all we have to do is change the rest of these to follow suit. We don't have to change everything before or worst case scenario, everything after. We just have to change this set right here. It doesn't affect any of the following headings. And that's the power of using the hierarchy key with the uh, separate columns, the, the pairs of numbers. And then the paragraph style is just do we need to indent this as a heading, as a unit, as a subunit, anything like that. So that's where uh, this field comes in convenient is for your cartographers, for the cartographers, so that they understand your intention, the authors, the geologic uh, mappers intention with the paragraph style. The symbol, as I alluded to when I was discussing the hierarchy key, is a field we calculate. And typically we calculate it so that it includes the hierarchy key. And we do this in um, field calculator. We'll use the field calculator to grab the hierarchy key plus the paragraph style plus the label plus the full name plus the description. Currently these two fields are optional and for the authors they're optional as well. Um, null values are permitted in both of these so it's not an issue. What we can do here is put in our RGB colors and if there's a pattern we can put in our pattern here so that the intention uh, behind, not the intention, the color can be preserved, our intended color can be preserved inside of the database as well so that we know what color we intended that unit to be when we share this data out. And here's the description source ID and there will be another video talking about what these are. These are your authors. So currently we have DS99 and that in this case would be Scott Aby. And we can see that Scott Aby has created this, S Aby. I am on here as the data source 02. This is arbitrary. Uh, Scott Aby should be DS0001 or DAS01 as we see over here. Um, this is done as example. He is the first, first author on it. I am definitely not on the list. I should be, you know, way down on the bottom if I do anything. And most of the editing stuff is captured in created user or last edited user. But this is to show that there is multiple authors and each author gets their own data source ID. This says description source ID and I want to be clear on that. This is the description source ID. 
but it does need to tie into our data source ID. So that's an important distinction that we need to make. This really needs to be populated with the correct information from your data source table. And that's the take home message for that. <clears throat> And then we get into the geomaterial and geoconfidence. So much like general lithology and general lithology confidence, these fields got renamed so there was less confusion as well as we no longer put in that 01.01.00.00. It's no longer numeric. It's uh, language. It's vocabulary based. These vocabulary need to be in the glossary, but they're also now in the general lithology description. And if you're looking at a GEMS um, data model description, these fields are in there. And I forget what page it's on. <clears throat> uh, starts on page 46 is the geomaterial text definitions, the terms and definitions for that. And then our confidence follows the same thing, high, medium, and low. For headings, there is no uh, reason to put in a confidence because there is no geomaterial associated with those. So we can go ahead and leave those null now. And then we have the created user, created date, last edited user, last edited date, and our description of map units. This field will be calculated off of a formula. So if you're an author, don't worry about populating this. We'll have the cartographers go ahead and populate, the GIS technicians populate this with a Python script. It's a much easier way of handling it. So this is the overview of the description of map units table. And the most convenient thing I can say is go ahead, populate map unit, label, name, full name, age. Short description, go ahead and give us the long description as well. We'll try and use that if possible. For NCGMP09, use the numeric code, but try and switch to gems and use the vocabulary, the term and description. This is probably one of the more convenient fields. If you, the geologist, you, the author, populate this beforehand with zero padding, it is outstanding. We can go ahead and make a description of map unit exactly as you want right from the get-go. It requires less back and forth editing with, hey, you missed this indent, hey, you missed this heading. It allows us to very quickly duplicate exactly what you give us. Same for the paragraph style. Including that does wonders for us to be able to explicitly state what paragraph style this is, and the order that everything is supposed to come in. Don't forget to populate your description source ID from your data source ID table. Populate geomaterial for gems, geomaterial confidence, and then that takes care of the description of map unit table. So I hope this was informative. I hope this gives you a deeper understanding of the GEMS NCGMP09 data models with regard to the description of map units data table. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me, leave comments in the leave post your comments down below, and I will address them as possible. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to explaining in more detail the data source ID table. That will be the next video we do.